Salvete amici, here is the grammar for chapter 10. I recommend that in addition to watching this video, uh, you also read the textbook's explanation on page 128, 129. Uh, we are presenting it a little bit differently, so between the two, I think it uh, should do the trick. Okay, first things first, <clears throat> review. If you remember, we had three types of nouns. Um, first um, column, first declension, second column, and third column. Uh, each type of noun uh, has different endings, but uh, the cases themselves, nominative, genitive, accusative, ablative, uh, do the same thing regardless of uh, which type of noun it is. So you'll remember, hold on a second, you'll remember, for instance, we can say, <clears throat> Colonus, the farmer is nominative, right? And uh, it means it's doing the action. The farmer is collecting flowers. It's a strange sentence. But the farmer is collecting flowers, accusative. Or you could have a sentence like this. The pater, in this case, it's the question mark nominative. Uh, father Quinti of Quintus, the father of Quintus is working in the field. Uh, so that's review, and uh, you really must know these endings, and you must know what each of the cases do, including the new genitive of the father of Quintus, Quintus's father. Okay, now for uh, some new stuff, and the new stuff is going to be the following. We have for not for the first column, but for the second two columns, we have a new gender, neuter. Neuter gender describes some things. Of course, you know some things are feminine, as you learned in chapter one. Chena is feminine. Moros is masculine. So some things are masculine or feminine. But we have this third gender called neuter. English doesn't really have gender, so it's hard so much. So it's hard to make analogy, but. Uh, just accept the fact that neuter, uh, Latin has this other gender called neuter, and it's to describe certain things, such as uh, saxum is rock, litus is sure. So uh, the endings for this, for saxum, since it's a second category noun, are going to be extremely similar to the, neuter, to the masculine ones you learned already. Colonus, coloni, colonum, colono, saxum, saxi, Saxum, Saxo. So it's pretty much the same endings, except for the first one is Saxum. Other than that, it's the same. And in the plural, now this is characteristic of neuter nouns. The plural is A, uh, not E, but A, uh, the letter A, which is to say pronounced A, ah, of course. Saxa. Of course, you know that from English. What's the plural of bacterium? Bacteria. So that's from Latin. The plural, saxum, saxa. Bacterium, bacteria. So that's going to be one of the characteristic things of neuter nouns is that the A is, um, uh, the plural is an A. Ah. <clears throat> the other thing you'll notice about neuter nouns is the nominative and the accusative look the same. In theory, this is an ambiguity. Uh, in other words, we won't know if the noun saxum is doing the action or receiving the action. But in practice, context will almost always make it perfectly clear. OK, so just simply, you can pause the video now and make sure you memorize this saxum, saxi, saxum, saxo, saxa, saxorum, saxa, saxis. Uh, and then third declension also has a neuter. Uh, remember, the nominative in third declension can be anything. Sometimes it's is for these kind. Same thing here. It's a wild card. This one happens to be us, which is kind of familiar to us, but it's tricky because it's not that. It's third declension. Litus, litoris, stem change. Litus because... Nominative and accusative are the same. Litore, same as cane. Plural and a, like bacteria. Litora, still we use the stem change. Litor, litoris, litora. Litorum, litora. 
litoribus, like canibus. So pause the video and recite that a few times. Litos, litoris, litus again, because that weird neuter thing is the same. Litore, litora, litorum, litora, litoribus. Okay, so let's see in action. <clears throat> Here's a sentence. Saxum volvens muscum non colligit. So a saxum, a rock, a stone. Now here, context is going to tell me that saxum, a stone, is the subject. A, and I put this in parentheses because we don't know this form yet, rolling. A rolling stone does not gather moss. A rolling stone does not gather moss. Context here is telling me that saxum is nominative, even though it's technically ambiguous. But in context, it's pretty clear that it means a rolling stone does not gather moss, in which case then muscum is accusative. Muscum. Saxum volvens, muscum non colligit. Um, okay, so, uh, but maybe, let's see another one. Here, this sentence, puer yachit, the boy is throwing saxum, a rock. Here the context is giving it, making it pretty clear that saxum here is accusative. The boy is throwing a rock. So just pay attention to the context, it should be clear. Saxum, a rolling stone, doesn't gather moss. Here, the boy is throwing a rock. Okay, let's look at a few more. <clears throat> oh, don't forget, I just wanted to show you one with the, with the new, the genitive that we just learned. Saxi, of a stone. So this means um, it's um, a, st uh, the, a stone's throw away. It is away by the throw of a stone. It is away by the throw of a stone. So I just wanted to show you the genitive is doing the same, the possessive genitive is doing the same that it did in the previous chapter. The throw of a stone, a stone's throw. It's a stone's throw away. Okay, let's look at some more. Oh, here's plural. Saxa muscum non colligunt. Uh, here, don't be fooled. This is a plural. Don't think it's like this. The girl, Puella, singular. It's plural. How did you know it's plural? You know it's plural because you know the word is saxum. If you know the word is saxum, then you know saxa is, is uh, plural. Just like you know bacterium, you know bacteria is plural. So this says stones, rolling stones, don't gather moss. Rolling stones, stones z -z -z, don't gather moss. So uh, you know it's plural because you know it's a neuter noun. And context is making it super clear that it's the subject. Rolling stones don't gather moss. Let's look. I bet you the next one will be an object. Yes. The boy is throwing stones. Now this one is accusative. Still plural because we know saxum. The plural of saxum is saxa. Only in this sentence, the boy is throwing stones. The context, and only by context, makes it clear that this is accusative. The boy is throwing stones. Okay, that's really just about it. I think we're going to see a sentence with third declension neuter now, too. Uh, I think just one. Polyphemus is walking slowly because he's blind, ad litus, to the shore. So just uh, remember with third declension neuters, this nominative can be anything. It's not like these where the, where the endings are set. The nominative endings for these nouns are set. The nominative endings for third declension can be anything, rex, um, orps, canis, nominative can be anything. So when you get to neuter that anything is doubled for the accusative. So then litos doesn't look like it if it were this kind of noun, but since it's neuter, this litos can be the subject. The, the beach is beautiful, or the shore is, is far off. 
it can be accusative. He's walking odd litos to the shore. Okay, that is it. Uh, it's um, pretty, pretty involved grammar. I recommend reading the book's description on page 12829. Uh, and also make sure you stop and memorize these new endings, saxum, saxi, saxum, saxo, saxa, saxorum, saxa, saxis, litos, litoris, litos, litore, litora, litorum, litora, litoribus. Uh, that will surely be on quizzes and quarterlies. Okay. So long.